Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing episode 3 breakdown called Lady in the Lake. In this episode call, I was the first to see her dead. You were the last to see her alive. In this episode, it shows the parallels of Cleo seeing Maddie at the department store. It seems that we're going to get more of that, of either Cleo and Maddie seeing each other from afar, but I don't think that they will ever officially meet and talk. Let's talk about Cleo. In this episode, it shows a flashback to 1948 where Cleo was a little girl. She hears the argument between her mother and father arguing about how Avon lost his saxophone in a gamble and how he owes someone some money. Cleo tries to help her dad by giving him money from her savings and giving him a number to play so he can win big. And Cleo was on the mark with that number, but unfortunately the dad took the money and left his family. The crazy thing is that she still loves her daddy. The way she defends her dad in episode one about that house, you can tell no matter what he did, she forgave him. Cleo was so nervous and scared of what happened regarding Murrah Summers and she doesn't want to go to jail because she was the driver. So she is constantly looking over her shoulders. She feels so uneasy. Cleo has a dream about her youngest son and when she wakes up, she tells her mom about how he is still not feeling well. So the mother advised her to see a priest and the priest couldn't do anything about it. And he asked her what is she's willing to sacrifice or give up on. And Cleo know what it is, but doesn't say it. Do you think since Cleo is helping a kingpin named Mr. Gordon, is this will be her karma or sacrifice regarding her son being sick? Reggie, I knew he was full of it and damn near a liar because I thought it was weird when Reggie sent Cleo to do the drop off and said, Mr. Gordon wants to make sure you are serious. Mr. Gordon doesn't want his only smart person that does his books go out there and do some drop off and that is very stupid in my opinion but I wonder if Gordon will find out that Reggie was the one that was behind the whole situation with the drop off. I feel bad for Chloe because she was so desperate to make that deal with Reggie regarding placing a bet and to win $30,000 I believe and give him 10% and she will vanish. Reggie is not going to do it, okay? He is going to set Chloe up. He's going to tell Gordon what she is trying to do. Reggie is all about himself and saving his own ass. Now, I forgot to mention that Officer Pratt met Cleo regarding the incident with Murder Summers, and Officer Pratt knew that Cleo was involved. Let's move on to Maddie. So Maddie was getting her ear pierced to get a job as a reporter. Now Maddie thought she was going to get hired because she provided a strong lead to the murder case of Tessie. She knew that's not how it goes regarding a job, but she needs the money and needs to pay her rent. The boss caves in the second go around when Maddie approached him and said that Stefan wrote her back. He told Maddie that she could only do research and he takes the credit for it, but Maddie will be the contributor. They found out that Tessie had skin cells underneath her fingernails and Stefan didn't even have a scratch on his face. We know Reggie did it. We know Reggie hurt Tessie. The relationship between Maddie and her son wasn't good in this episode. Apparently Seth knew that Milton wasn't his father in the begin with. Maybe that is the reason why he talks to her like that. But let's be honest, um, I still don't feel bad for him. He still need his butt whoop. The way that he was acting out and cussing and all that stuff. To me, that was unnecessary. I do get his perspective regarding that, how Maddie didn't tell him what was going on. And especially when she decided to pack her stuff up and leave and that made him even more mad. But at the same time, you're still a child and you shouldn't be acting out and be cussing at your mama like you do, okay? So that's just my opinion on that one. So could it be that Alan, Tessie Durr's father, is the one that is the father of Seth? I'm going to be honest, Maddie is all over the place. Um, she doesn't really know what she wants to do with her life other than being a reporter if she's doing that for the right reasons. I don't care about the relationship between Maddie and Officer Pratt. It's a fling, and I wonder why she hasn't got a divorce from her husband yet. But I did some research regarding the Jewish culture, and it states that only the husband 
has the power to issue a Jewish divorce. The husband ends the marriage by giving his wife a git. A git is a document and formally ends a marriage under Jewish law. A wife must receive the git will in order for the divorce to be final. So that is the reason why that Maddie didn't file for divorce. Towards the end of the episode, she gets a phone call from a psychiatric facility. Stefan is requesting to meet her in person. I feel like the entire premises of this show is about dreams. If you notice throughout the episode one through three, it shows the red book called the Genuine Dream Book number 736. It's a dream book for the lottery number play. This one is a HP dream book by Professor, I believe it's Ura Kanji, an African-American author and published Herbert Paris, which he used his fictitious name under. It's a three digit lucky number list, including holidays. It's a 66 pages of dreams, letters of the alphabet and five pages of ladies' names and also five pages of gentlemen's names. The book also contains an introduction and two important messages addresses to the black people of the world and to all the oppressed people of the world. In keeping with, with the politics, the conscience of the author, it is not surprised to see that it's under the list of notions. Nature events one might see while not dreaming. The first item is to see a race riot in which event your lucky number of the day is 291. In addition to his outspoken political views, Herbert was also a philosopher and a promoter of living right among the gamblers using his betting system teaching them that love is the only supreme agency in the guidance of a man's career and self-determination of his ultimate destiny. I've never heard about the dream book before and I thought it was kind of interesting of how they kept showing that and how other people and what i mean other people other characters was talking about their dreams and what they want to do like for example dora wants to sing in paris and you have slappy that wants a stable job as a famous comedian and so i feel like that is like the whole dynamic that was going to be in the entire season regarding dreams goals and also betting those numbers to hit and so they can just be stable for the rest of their lives and so i thought episode three was okay looking forward to the next episode also make sure you check out my review for domino day this is going to be the final episode six i have a lot of thoughts about it just make sure you check out the video thank you so much for watching my channel make sure you like and subscribe and until then see you later